Honestly, I don't consider myself a jazz musician or a jazz artist. Um, I feel like, you know, I'm using the foundation of jazz to create music that um, that kind of goes beyond jazz. FK Jazz, well, it means uh, formerly known as jazz. Um, the name kind of came out of the um, trajectory of like my career. It was kind of a, an idea of like really combining all of the, the things that I learned as a jazz musician and combining the things that I learned as a music producer and bringing those things together, um, which kind of culminated into uh, the type of music that I'm doing today. So I can't really call it jazz, so I had to call it something else. So it became FKA Jazz. It's very much a, a melting pot of the music that I studied, you know, jazz music, but then also uh, really based on uh, the sound that I grew up with, which was hip hop, which was R&B, uh, which is soul music, you know. So it's really, you know, in a way that sound is a, it's a collection of those things, you know. It's not just like one thing. Um, but definitely listening to it, you know, it's very groove based, you know, but then at the same time there's a lot of improvisation involved and, you know, you know, when we're performing live, we just try to have a lot of fun basically and, you know, that's the premise of, you know, why we're playing in the first place. hip-hop or you know rock or anything like that but everything uh, that came out of pop music you know anything that came out of America in general really comes from the foundations of jazz music that's like the first you know American music and so um, a lot of that is also to kind of pay homage to the fact that you know all of the music that we're creating today is an homage you know, to the music of our forefathers, you know, the, the guys who really created that sound of, you know, jazz music. So stereotype threat, um, it means, it's basically the idea of when um, you're, you fear uh, some type of stereotype, you know, when you almost define yourself based on a need to distance yourself from stereotypes. You know, going to school for jazz and all of these things kind of, uh, it, it, it forced me to think of myself in a certain way, you know, to think that maybe I'll be the next John Coltrane or maybe I'll be the next, like, um, I don't know, Grover Washington or whatnot. And, um, you know, I was doing a lot of studying of that music and like really coming down to uh, understanding the fundamentals and the foundation of, you know, jazz music. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, um, you know, I grew up listening to a Tribe Called Quest and I grew up listening to like Run DMC and, you know, LL Cool J and Busta Rhymes and, you know, the list goes on. The stereotype threat, you know, um, really kind of comes out of the sense of uh, self-discovery, really coming back to who it is that I am as a whole, not just as I am as, you know, one aspect of my life or one aspect of the music that I can create, um, but, you know, it's like the culmination of of everything that, you know, I can like really bring to the table, you know, in a way. And, that self-discovery was just something that was really joyful and therefore, you know, in a way, like the music itself is really joyful. You know, when I was
was 18, my mom passed away. And uh, the last thing that she gave me uh, was the tenor saxophone that I still play to this day. When my mom passed away and, you know, I really, there was a moment where I realized, like, you know, the significance of her giving me a saxophone, you know, as like kind of like the last thing that she gave me. And that, that was something that allowed me to kind of pivot between just being a musician and really looking at the, um, the amazing gift that she gave me, you know, my father too, you know. Um, but the amazing gift that my parents gave me in order to uh, not only create music, but also create experiences for people.